already see in Aurelia Bank. I would like to see some wholesale change in Hillisang's decision making. Fair. Because if he gets Fair. the Khan again, harder I to address in one day. Not want to see the same things from yesterday. Nevertheless, we're into draft, gentlemen. G-Rex on the blue side, they've taken away Irelia, they've taken away Akali, and the response, Ergot, Aatrox, and Rakan. And this is becoming more and more of the thing we're seeing is either teams trading their preferred pick, ban of Ergot on blue side, expecting an Aatrox ban, or the red side team being stuck with maybe the new triumvirate. Maybe Alistair, Aatrox, and Ergot will be the required bans with where the meta is right now, because this does open up the tanks, especially on the top side. And I do like the Fnatic, yeah, as you're saying, you know, when you ban out both the Urgot and the Aatrox, allows more options and more creative use in the top lane, which they've made the substitution specifically for. But if we rewind to one of our pre-pick-and-ban uh, discussions, this is something you might expect with Soaz. This is indicative that Whippo will be following his shoes and playing tanks, because for Soaz, opting out of a skill matchup makes sense. For Whippo, if you're looking at his solo queue especially, we know he can play the carries, but can Fnatic play around his carry play? A little bit more up in the air on the world stage. Updating with the current picks here, Stitch has been my favorite player on G-Rex. He has been an outstanding carry for this team. Very good stats, playing offensively as well. He always is looking for as much uptime on an AD carry as possible. Them locking in an early Kai'Sa, I do like, even though we've seen so many teams hesitant, you know, to go with this, you know, with Zaya rising in priority and Varus being a very good answer for lane. But the eye test here in bot lane will be so interesting. Because if you think of the two games so far, the shift in bot lane was the biggest difference. We saw Reckless and Hillsong build up a big CS advantage over Rakara and Aframu against 100 Thieves. Then Jackie Love had a great game the following game with nothing changing. Zion and Rakan, both games from Fnatic. Let's see if they actually choose to attack bot lane as it's very early Braum priority, mostly to allow the Orn to do his thing in team fight. And that's uh, almost certainly going to be Whipper doing as many Orn horns as is oh, possible. Yeah. To Fisher specifically made us say that if Whippo is playing that uh, on every time the ultimate's available, he'll throw it down. I feel like we're seeing uh, Braum and Thresh a little more today than we have in the previous uh, days of the world's group stage here. And of course, uh, for Fnatic, where do, which direction do they go with the ADC? Zaya is still open and available. I'm not sure if you want it into uh, the Kai'Sa Thresh, and G-Rex will secure the chin. I mean, Kai'Sa also opens up a lot of pocket picks that people around the world will play. Uzi's Vein is always a possibility into this matchup. The Tristana is, of course, as reckless <laughs> as Spirit Animal, and it's very playable into the Kai'Sa. You've got a lot of options here. Where will they go? Will this also be the Sivir, another reckless pick that we've seen once already at Worlds? Yeah, and we also have seen Uzi actually use a very similar strategy to Reckless, you know, getting early attack speed, shoving the lane very quickly, trying to push in. And this is Fnatic already setting up a very good five on five, uh, you know, team composition here. Whippo with the Orn, as you said, very easy engage, and since there's no Braum to block the ultimates coming through, Fnatic really have the go button advantage. A pile-in comp to be true, at least three picks into the pick and ban. Well, let's see how G-Rex decides to respond, because I have been fairly impressed with G-Rex's opening stage games. If you think back to the two previous performances, they have not been rolled over and absolutely obliterated for the first 15 to 20 to 25 minutes. And I think if Fnatic are hoping for a similar trend, then this composition of, you know, team fighting and scaling with the Orn, with the Braum, with the Siva, can work into their favor. Uh, mid lane bans taken off the table with Syndra and LeBlanc, and there is the Skana denied from MT. And it's pretty clear on the G-Rex side, we haven't even really talked about it. It's top lane Shen into Orn. It's very much going to be a Stitch-focused composition, and this is something that he excelled on back in his Samsung Galaxy days a few years ago, probably watching on the Gen G results of this tournament with interest. Very much going to be a bot lane where Kaisa and Thresh go pretty even, all things considered, against the Sivir and Braum. And Stitch in team fights has turned it on more often than not at this tournament. Yeah, I really do approve of this strategy from G-Rex. Probably their best chance at upsetting Fnatic here. We've already seen Stitch using the Killer Instinct very early and offensively. Now he'll have some extra support when he does go in, get to bring uh, some teammates with him, and, you know, maybe have the Lantern for a way out if he uh, goes in, gets the kill, and needs a reset. Of course, uh, going to be jumping into Phase 2 in just a moment. Those last two bands were the Galio and the Skana. And I uh, can see that the players have just dropped out the lobby, so we'll give you guys an update in a moment or two. Yeah, it was just that the Galio ban, I believe, was supposed to be an Olaf ban. Uh, so they're resetting that and going to get the correct ban in.
So a bit more time, a bit more table setting them before we can get into this one. But already, Fnatic answering one thing we threw out, saying, let's see some new stuff already. Sivra, good sign that new stuff is a role. Well, let's talk about the uh, jungle champion pool then, because Skana taken off, Olaf taken out as well. Um, you know, what direction do these guys want to go? Is, you know, Sejuani a thing? Do you go Nocturne? Do you go Camille? Like, what direction do you think, Obi? Yeah, Sejuani's really fallen off since... Not the, a thing. Definitely yeah, not since, a thing. Since the last nerfs. Uh, so probably Cross that not, one out not there, Trevor. be the case. Um, but there are things like Zach that we've seen that if you really wanted a super hard engage, long range engage, tanky champion, uh, to start it off, that is a possibility floating around. I always worry, though, that teams will only remember the mid to late game, Zach, and forget the many, many games in the past where Zach was invaded again and again, where if all your lanes weren't pushing, the enemy jungler kind of finds Zach and gets a free meal either on some Raptors or on the enemy champion. So it's a very risky pick, but when it pays off, it does pay off in the biggest way. Definitely does have to be scared, especially of the Olaf uh, in the early game. And we'll see if we get back in a champ select with a similar setup. Well, I can see the uh, picks and bans. It is running through the draft. Just as a quick update, if you're joining us, uh, there was a incorrect champion ban. It was Galio instead of Olaf during phase two. But just looking at the player faces and reactions, pretty stern, serious looks on the side of G-Rex. They are 0-2 in this group. And Fnatic with Dylan Falco standing behind them. Big smiles, a lot of energy. A lot of positivity, and I know that's something that Whippo definitely also brings to the table. He has a bit of an infectious <laughs> enthusiasm. Um, sometimes it's fantastic, sometimes it's distracting, but of course he's starting today for Fnatic. That's especially funny too, because uh, you know, as a North American viewer uh, during the European LCS, when he were, first was brought on the scene, one of the biggest and most impressionable things that we got from Whippo was a lot of his trash talk. Yes. Uh, that really stuck with it, and we definitely enjoyed that. So he's definitely a lively character, and we do, uh, and very good speaker as well. And his carry play on solo queue was something that was drawing a lot of attention. He had so many challenges points over in Korean solo queue. So I wanted to see the carries, understand that in pro play, your decision making and where you need to be for the team is different. You're gonna see the rise picked up here, likely gonna be that blind mid lane pick for Caps. Yeah, that's gonna give them some more options for later in the game. You know, you can send rise to the side lane very effectively as well, use the realm more. Kobe, what does the G-Rex <laughs> draft do? Can you walk me through these big burly tanks with defensive utility in a Kai'Sa? Yeah, so now the only thing they have to be worried about, I guess would be the dreaded Nocturne ultimate that has become a little they bit... They could have one. Exactly, a little bit of a joke, but whenever you see all these globals, that oh. is actually one of the things that has come up as a decent counter. You know, when Nocturne ultimate is on, neither Shen nor Galio, uh, unless they are standing close enough to one of their teammates to actually have their own vision of them, can use those ults. And while we're chuckling about it, the enemy team, if they pick in Nocturne, actually both the Galio and the Shen don't really have an ultimate button if they haven't pressed it already. So there is actually a huge amount of value there. Wait and see if Fnatic will index into a Nocturne. It is a possibility. It is open. Couple seconds later, I'm holding my breath to see what Broxa decides to do. He has played Nocturne three times this year already. Won two of those games. And the last few seconds will pivot to one of the champions that he made a name for himself on in his debut on the Fnatic roster with Lee Sin. Kobe, I see a cheeky grin. Oh, what yeah. do you think of the Fnatic composition now it's locked in? I was very excited when I started researching coming into Worlds and saw a lot of these players start to re-pick Lee Sin up. Uh, and Broxo was one of the guys that had put a lot of solo queue games on the champion in the boot camp for Worlds. So I'm excited to see him on the big stage here. You can make a lot of creative plays in the early game. And we're, I think we were a few highlight plays away from power pick Lee since So far this tournament's been answers to Olaf for that skill matchup that does tend towards the Lee Sin side. This is into Camille, another skill matchup. And it's a bit of a bold choice. There was many different ways they could go, but this is sort of thing that could blow the game open in Fnatic's favor. One of the big strengths of Lee Sin is, of course, the mobility of this champion, and mobility very good against Camille Jungle. If you're facing it, everyone always talks about how scary it is to have the hook shot come out of Fog of War uh, and have a lot of burst damage. Lee Sin is one of the champions that does have so much mobility, he can actually work around it. So this early game matchup uh, with Broxa, uh, as well as Empty, is going to be so exciting considering they're just subbing this guy right back And in. I'm so interested to see which keystone we get 
out of the Lee Sin. If you look over to Carso, one of those aficionados of the Lee Sin, it was the Dark Harvest. And if it's going to be a bloody game, and Fnatic has had quite a few of those with kills coming thick and fast on both sides, you pick up those souls, and that burst damage from the Lee Sin gets to critical levels. We're about to load into the Rift and find out the answer, Papa Smith. The G-Rex and Fnatic starting off their game. This is the last for Group D. When all four teams from Group D will then complete their second round robin next Wednesday. G-Rex looking for their first win and listen to those fanatic chants. A lot of support for Reckless and crew. And that support is just as disappointed as we are, ladies and gentlemen. Here is a tension-building pause, but I did see a Dark Harvest for Broxa. So some hopeful team fights in the Fnatic camp. And honestly, that Invictus Gaming game, I think Deficio said it best, just bloody on both sides. They weren't thinking about rotations, not the sort of game that every Korean analyst would approve of, but the sort of game where Dark Harvest does benefit. It's been mentioned on the cast already, but both allies and enemies perishing does give you those Dark Harvest stacks and can be so big when it comes to getting access to the 150 stacks and thus the reliable burst damage as the game goes on. We do have to mention with Dark Harvest, every time it comes up, you know, a lot of people uh, just remember the big damage for late game. In the early game, it is more difficult to use because you only have 20 seconds after picking up one of those Dark Harvest souls to get uh, the damage off on an empowered attack. Well, let's see if Broxa can make it work or not. Um, Hillisang was making his way through to that Dragon Pit. And one of the things that Fnatic became fairly well known for in EULCS was some very creative level ones. And we've seen them happening sporadically throughout the uh, world's group stage here. Yeah, but Hillian Reckless standing in front of Koala and Stitch. And Brahmin Sivir is actually quite good at level one. Sivir can take the W for the auto attack reset to try and get a quicker stun. Here, though, they're being chased off with superior numbers from G Rex, who have decided to push in and actually get a free start for Empty on the red buff. They're even going to pull for him on the Camille, trying to really push this Camille into a strong early game. And viewers at home might wonder why that spot, why around that entrance towards the red buff area of G-Rex do we always see these level ones? It's all about getting a ward to see the jungler on the scuttle crab when that spawns just after two minutes. It's very much about jungle pathing, and you really want it as late as possible. Again, Camille very effective on level two because of the range of a hook shot. This ward here is going to alert them to the uh, path here from empty though and then he'll just move on up to the scuttle crab but his location has been given away and that means no further shenanigans reckless and hilly wave someone pushing away for them for now so koala playing the zoning game and caps will be playing the rise that third unique champion in three games papa smithy we were talking about uh expectations for fanatic but they've had the substitution and now we see a slightly different flavor draft and now we need to judge them on execution, how well they can get through this laning phase and build up what is going to be a fantastic team fight later in the game. And the thing about G-Rex is, while they'll be able to help out in skirmishes later, pre-6 they don't have the sort of ultimates that guarantee Hextop Ultimative into the hero's entrance and Shen joining them. They have to be very careful around cooldowns. G-Rex with ults up, extremely powerful and super hard to outplay. If you bait out the ultimate, we're talking two, three minute cooldowns on some of these big game changing ultimates. That's where Fnatic will really want to play. Yeah, a lot of classic combinations here on the field that we will see later. But as of right now, if we check back in on the early game, uh, Broxa, because Lee Sin, he went straight from his red up to Krug's first before getting Scuttle, uh, and Empty went for the possible gank on bottom side. Broxa is a full camp ahead right now uh, with a lot more CS on this Lee Sin, uh, has been able to rush through. So we'll see if he just cleans out the bottom side of his camp as well. Seems like a bit of a full clear style, just to get access to that ultimate. That's when the playmaking really kicks up for the Lee Sin. Started off different, I feel like Lee Sin, when we think of it back in the insect days, getting the kills pre-6, but the farm up to six became more and more common over time. And those are the small costs of just looking for possible ganks, right? Uh, having your path go from red uh, bottom into the scuttle crab takes a little bit of time uh, and is going to sacrifice a little bit of experience, but it does position empty very well for a possible dive under Bwipo. All right, let's take a look. Level three for Bwipo. He's got flash available to him and he needs to do this perfectly. The Spirit's Refuge comes oh. down. That's a two-man knocker. The Bellows Breath is doing well. PK is down to 50 HP. He flashes away from Whippo. Empties the first target. He flashes the wall. Caps comes chasing. First blood to Fnatic. PK's running for his life. Can he get the execute? That's the question. 
Gonna try and run away here. There's no one collapsing at the moment, so the Shen should get away. The double knockup was so big from Whippo, but it was the execution from G-Rex. They stacked the CC. They're both in range of the same knockup, and then from there, Caps was able to feast. Yeah, let's take another look at it, because on your screen, minimap, teleport just used in the mid lane by Galio. So we know that there is a teleport discrepancy right now, and this is Caps going to start immediately channeling as soon as they go in and they commit to it. That is the trigger for Whippo. Get the double knockup, teleport starts coming through, Caps arrives, and they're able to pick up the first blood. The stacking of the CC was so big. I, if I was Shen, I would have walked past the tower and then taunted back towards the minion line <laughs> as Whippo reacts to that one being fired up about it. Koala walking up here. Well, let's find out if they can get the hook that lands onto the shield. Hillisan gets pulled forward and may lose his life. He flashes away to stay alive. Here comes Whippo. Candy's gonna be the target of the duo as Broxa joins the fight. Boomerang Blade flies across and Broxa kills Secured. Now Koala's the target. He gets sent packing. In comes Empty, a four-man stack of Fnatic. They're diving the tower, looking for the third. Stitch now is the further follow-up. Caps needs to find a room prison. They've lost one in reply. Defe Defensive flash, Caps and Brox are trying to run him down. Sonic wave, if it oh! finds a target, Broxa brings it home! And Fnatic are dominating the whole game just like that, Trevor! Broxa with the stylist finish, but honestly, the whole beginning of this game was big plays from Quippo. It's not a literary classic, but it's a tale of two teleports. The mid lane teleport to get back to lane for the Gallia. The two teleports from Fnatic have made the top and bot lane open up for them. They're paying it forward here. Caps uses his teleport to protect Bippo top, and Bippo gets to pay it forward to the bottom lane, comes in with some kills, and my goodness, we could show replays of that Broxa uh, war jump into Sonic Wave multiple times. Bro status Whippo confirmed here. <laughs> awesome stuff in the early game. We'll start the replay off. That teleport, the only one available of any member, ends up being the big move because it started off with a nice slick play from g -Rex. They definitely did. Acer Predator replay right here starts with Kawa flashing in. He landed the play. They get. Plenty of damage here down on the Hillisang, but he flashes out, and that just closed the door with Whippo's teleport. Comes in full health, plenty of mana, and they start to rack up the kill. The creeping dread of that teleport channel was, I'm sure, there for all three members of G-Rex who were present. Caps got the blue buff, you're wondering, from that kill in the top lane, still wears it here. They may take one casualty on the dive, but Brock's a cool under pressure. Casa <laughs> had his sniper cues on earlier this week, so does Broxa. Yeah, Stitch tried to dodge it right there, running straight up, but unable to escape. And we've already had some good attitude here from Brippo so far. 100% kill participation. G-Rex targeted him. He counted that play. The tale of two teleports in chapter two of the story leads Fnatic to a 2,000 gold lead before eight minutes. I'll be watching EULCS next year for some Whippo face, because that seems like a quality <laughs> meme just based on five minutes of play. Yeah, he's already got two on the board. Broxa, though, might want to create some up for himself. He's now level six, access to the big burst damage and knockback in his dragon kick. And we'll pretend we didn't see that face plant, nevertheless. <laughs> yeah, access to level six. And the thing is, Broxa um, is very, very comfortable making those very aggressive, very proactive plays when you see the prowess of his solo laners like Whippo and Caps. We've seen it time and time again. Fnatic will also get an early Ocean Drake, the best Drake for this stage in the game. And it sounds like a bit of just a standard point, but especially with this composition where all three laners carry laners here, need mana to push. It actually is really important for Siva Rice and the Ornn and Topside. As Brox is back, remember that ultimate? He is indeed. Uh, there's a Fisher in the ground and such an easy kill. The first one's picked up by Reckless. Helisang will donate his life and it's Koala that picks it up. While that fight is going on, there's a duel in the top lane. Whippo's being run down. He's got a massive HP disadvantage. Yeah, Whippo just went to go interrupt the Shen so that he would not arrive down there. That actually helped out Broxa and allowed them to finish off uh, Stitch 
right after the shield, and no Shen does arrive. In the end, it costs him some health, but Ocean Drake will regenerate him right back up. And throw out what we were saying about a skill matchup in the jungle when there's four kills already onto the Lee Sin. We're getting into <laughs> one rotation territory on the Camille. Yeah, it does remove some of the skill because just a Dragon Kick can take 50% of your very HP, but let's take another look at how it happened. He gets the execute damage there. Reckless actually picks up the last hit for the kill. On your mini-map, you can see the Orn ultimate is uh, what Whippo used, and that is going to be on cooldown, but definitely a successful uh, stop to the Shen teleport. And there we go. It's still that 3,000 gold lead before 10 minutes. First item's already starting to come through. And for Fnatic, it could not have gone better. The counterplay and then the proactive dive themselves established a lead in every single one of their lanes. And for G-Rex, they've got to be very, very careful to not let this get further because they can just get destroyed. But a lot of the inevitabilities about where this mid-game was going with ultimates for G-Rex are thrown out when it's a 3,000 gold lead for Fnatic pre-10 minutes. That is an insane gold lead for this far into a game. Now, even if you get off the picture-perfect combos, the item disadvantage will, at minimum, slow down the first kill and allow Fnatic to be in position. And as we've been saying, a lot of the money is on Broxa. He has a fully completed warrior enchantment, upgraded boots, and more money to spend on an extra health crystal. Now, warrior enchantment, if you don't know, gives 60 attack damage. The Tiamat over here for Camille, 25. So just in the straight up offensive stats right there, he will win uh, the 1v1. And he's got extra money to spend on tenacity and, uh, you know, extra things. So he kills you quicker and he takes longer to die. It's definitely so going to be very, very succinct. Trevor, I like it. I like it. Very difficult for Empty here uh, to pull off those plays on Camille. But let's try and bring it back and go hard mode right now. The difficult scenario for this game: How will G Rex get back? Actually, it's going to start in the mid lane. Candy has to flash out, and he does escape with his life. Empty was waiting in the wings. And I'm going to go back to that uh, question, Kobe. The fact that G Rex are still holding on to their towers is very early. If you look at the HP, it hasn't fallen yet. The longer they can delay those tier ones going down, the less impactful this gold lead will feel like. And remember what we were talking about earlier, they do have very strong synergies in their ultimates. If you can bring together the AoE of the Galio ultimate on top of Camille uh, and allow Kai'Sa to get in there and pick off the low target during the knockup, that is where you want to try and make your big plays. However, they're facing a Fnatic that have a very big early lead. And usually a Lee Sin with four kills might not be ideal kill distribution, but in a game like this, wherever Broxa goes, it doesn't matter what wards he's walking over. He's so powerful as an individual that he both represents a dive on the side of the jungle he's on and oh. also can 1v1. He's here threatening that dive. They want this turret. Papa Smithy, you say the word dive and Fnatic, they want to make it happen. The Sonic Wave didn't find the target though. Enough pressure and a numbers advantage to get tower first blood and unlock some more freedom on the map. Yeah, wherever Broxa goes, the, you know, G-Rex cannot afford to fight around that area of the map. They would have to use some of these, you know, global and semi-global ultimates to try and make a trade somewhere else. It's very hard for them to find a foothold at the moment. And the more open the map is in terms of map length with turrets down, the less likely you're going to get a wombo combo off because there's so much more space for Fnatic to play around, to chase, to play and make. And that means that once again, the chance of everyone piling in with the Galio and Shen becomes low. All right, now a little bit easier uh, mode is what is the next set for Fnatic? They took the bottom turret so they can swap Reckless up to the top side. He is on Sivir. Plenty of attack speed. He's already finished uh, the Storm Razor in addition to his Berserker Greaves. So he can just head up here with Whippo, push in on the top side and continue the momentum. All right, Koala manages to get a very good flay and forced a flash as well. Roxa didn't fan it, uh, uh, fancy further chase, but summon a spell Liss Thresh, and all that burst damage makes him a juicy target. There is Reckless starting to chip away at this top outer turret, and every time I look at the minimap, I'm trying to see where the grouping is. G-Rex trying to respond a potential dive, but Fnatic aren't sending out. What I want to see from Fnatic is the threat into turrets rather than actually making risky plays. They're so far ahead, it's more about the threat, but here's the bar. All right, Broxa gets the Dragon's Rage. Ko Koala's the target, he gets knocked up by the Yawn Horn. Here comes Reckless. His ultimate's already used and Empty's killed Hilly. Fnatic are somewhat split. It's a fight on multiple fronts. Candy gets a good taunt. Caps is running for his life. Flash may be needed, not just yet. Now Puppo, he's gonna flash the wall. Fnatic, that was terrible. G-Rex are running 
running circles around Fnatic. Wolfbug gets chunked up by the winds of war, running backwards. Fnatic may consider a turn, decide against it in the end. Only Hilly goes down. The gold lead spares their blushes a little bit, but Fnatic is biting off more than they can chew. They could have gone for a much more measured play where Broxer just comes through the triangle brush, throws out a Q and threatens a dive. Instead, they hit a Q, the Lee Syndrome starts and unfortunately kills. Go the way of T-Rex. You have to be careful about giving over too much money to this G-Rex composition. Again, remember the big ultimates they have? If you're in a condensed area like the jungle here, it is easier to use the big ultimate. Here comes Galio. They completely collapse on Hillisang. They also use the Kai'Sa ultimate and pick up a kill for uh, empty here. On the other side, Caps, after the taunt is used, he knows there's no more crowd control to stop his Rizal, so he gets out with Realm Warp. One might say a little too high fee. Yep. Uh, bringing up in a whole term. Fnatic needs to just slow this down a little. And once again, go back. Make sure they hold on to this three and a half, four thousand gold lead. You can see the top outer turret is down to 50% already. And with this Sivir's wave pushing ability, Fnatic can just play the dominoes game, knocking over the objective. And if you're the coach, Dylan Falco, and you're doing a VOD review of that previous play, he might just present an alternate scenario where, if you remember, it's Orin and the Sivir pushing in. That's a lot of threat and wave clear. The Shen provides nothing, even if his duo lane is there to join him. If you throw out an Orin ultimate just to zone and you just do turret damage, the structure was what you were focused on. The kill is what they gave up. Well, they're at it again, and the lasso does catch Broxa, but he doesn't want what he caught there as they're able to finish off the blue buff. Caps does take it in the end. And you can see G-Rex are trying to fight off Fnatic with these control wards in their own jungle, but they just don't have the stats to be able to actually take the fight there. And it allows Fnatic to continue to push in and take more. From here, though, we're going to see them clear out some vision. This is Solo Gold onto Reckless, already going to be pushing towards his second big item here. I imagine a zeal. I watch enough Reckless games to see that. <laughs> look at me. What a prophet I am. Well researched, Papa Smithy. Take a look at some of the other items, though. Brox has just picked himself up a phage and another ruby crystal. The Iceborne Gauntlet is sitting in Whippo's back pockets. And, of course, Caps is trying to work his way up towards that Seraph. So a few big ticket items have been completed. Fortunately, on the side of G-Rex, that is also true. PK and Stitch with their first items. Candy's got that rower stacking. So, you know, effective combat stats are looking a little better, but it's still a difficult situation for G-Rex, and they need to play for time. But on the other side, Fnatic need to keep up the tempo. In a position like this, you want to keep threatening and see which ults you can glean from G-Rex. You can't always wait for the ideal play. If you force out any of these Wombo ultimates, the double globals here or a big engage ultimate, then you have so much more breathing room in the cooldown windows to push, push, push. And speaking of push, we see the Rift Tower started around 50% HP. All right, Reckless and Hellas saying they're going to jump in on this one. Empty decides to go forward, puts down the baby cage. In comes Candy. Everybody stacked up in a 5v5. Death Sentence connects for Koala. There's the chase forward for PK. Empty's running for his life. G-Rex realize they can't win this fight. They back away. Fnatic get the prize. And after that, Fnatic are going to have a very big window where they don't have to worry about those big AOE ultimates. Galio, Camille, and Shen all used here and the Thresh box to try and disengage. With the rewards of the Rift Tail, Fnatic trying to lack, uh, knock down the mid turret here. Wave is so limited on the side of G-Rex. Just the Q coming through from Galio mostly. There is the Rift Tail. They needed to tank it up and Reckless should be able to get the turret right now. Oh, every single time Koala throws out that death sentence. I'm holding my breath. He's trying to lasso a Fnatic member in. But Fnatic will secure the third outer tower, extend the gold lead to 5,000, and also pick up a second Ocean Drake on the way out. This is a gigantic lead with the team composition that can utilize it to knock down in a turret. And my impression is the Fnatic playstyle and draft here is very much trying to play new meta. No longer are we in the meta where you put down all the wards and you try to just control the map. Now having people like a four kill Broxa allows you to exert pressure. That means that if G-Rex go to the river, that's kind of new territory for them. They're not really strong enough to peek their heads forward and Fnatic actually control about 65% of this map. And the ideal scenario, the setup here for Fnatic is to put your marksman in the mid lane, Sivir, very, very good wave clear, so Reckless can just go there, throw out the boomerangs, instantly clear that wave, and you have your Rise on top side, your Orn on the bottom side with teleports about to come up, get your 1-3-1 in order first, 
and you start to take away a lot of the territory that G-Rex feels safe in. As you slowly close in these wards and move up your own, then they have a lot harder time transitioning between these objectives. The trickiest thing actually is the lane assignment for the top lane against the Rise, because it's not a teleport Kaisa, who you could maybe have just hang back, queue a couple of waves, not going to get every minion wave, getting a lot of solo experience. Instead, the Kaisa can only stay for a while, back away. That will increase the time that Fnatic can invade for vision. Has to be shallow. You can see where the red wards are around the Baron area, but Baron hasn't spawned. This does usually have the flow-on effect of the game, calming down a little bit. The easiest objectives have been taken down. But once the Baron comes on, that's where you can start to be a bit more aggressive topside as Fnatic. Well, you won't have to wait long, Pop Smithy. Uh, Baron I'm not is very patient on the anymore. way. <laughs> about 40 seconds here left on that one. And Fnatic, again, like you're talking about, nobody can really answer the rise 1v1. So G-Rex are trying to come up with, it looks like a little bit sneakier move here, where they send more people, try and surprise him, uh, and get a quick kill which would be the, the way to try and get some momentum back in this game and open up some area to work with. And a quick kill is definitely on the menu from the item here from Ryze. Has the Spellbinder. Second definite situational item on Ryze, but it's extra Nikes for someone who's already quick. Speaking of those Nikes, Cap's going to wave clear for now, but it's all about, like you say, the one kill, then try to start baiting some of those globals, then it's pretty much plain sailing for Fnatic. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned the Spellbinder, but take a look, Rapid Fight Cannon picked up Black Cleaver for Broxa as well, so two item spikes sitting on the side of Fnatic, and 1.5, um, as it Being were. Being generous so, over there. You know, it's those windows of opportunity, it's, it's those windows where you actually have statistical advantages from your gold lead, and that's where Fnatic find themselves in. And they're already pushing that vision, Kobe, you talked about, into that left-hand quadrant around the Baron. Right. So G-Rex are going to have one good shot at trying to answer here, where they have to commit with it and go all in, use all of these ultimates in succession to try and catch someone from Fnatic out. So that means on Fnatic's mind, one of the number one things should be slightly kiting back so they don't get hit with this knockup of the Gallia ultimate uh, or they try and protect the person that Camille goes after with the Hextech ultimatum. If they can just do that, then they can re-engage afterwards and you'll see them take over. Sidewave control wasn't one of the strong points of Fnatic yesterday or even in their first victory. The gold leads though showing about 1500 on mid and bot lane but are pretty indicative of the game against 100 Thieves. Whippo walked upside looking for a cage, but uh, that's just a solo kill. Now you see him, now you know! Roxa moves in with the Lee Sin and finishes off the enemy jungler. There is no smite here for a smite steal. They have overwhelming odds and they started it up! All right, so PK's gonna interrupt Whippo. There's a four-man Fnatic onto Baron. Take a look at Candy coming in from the river. This is gonna be a four on three for now. Baron's down to 4,000. Death Sentence doesn't find a target. Caps in the back of the pit. This will be a smite fight, but only for Fnatic! Secure Cured by Broxa! Now G-Rex trying to do something on the uh -oh. offline. Koala takes down Hilly. Keep your eyes on Reckless and Cap. They take the Realm Wolf. They're gonna follow Stitch. Broxa's looking for Koala, and this should be a wipe. Stitch gets obliterated with two spells. And Fnatic get Baron, get the kills, and they are absolutely in control. Yep, they already have minion waves in place, Trevor, so they could just get right to pushing on these turrets. Reckless is ready to take it down. Only one frontliner there in Candy, couldn't control space for enough, and Stitch ended up behind the pit. No chance for G-Rex. There goes the inner turret. We'll see if they actually push it further at all. Seems like the answer is no. Inner turret middle, inner turret top. Uh, the gold lead is 10,000 at 22 minutes, and gentlemen, Yesterday, we had one hell of a fast day. Average game time around 28 minutes. Today, we might beat that record with some of the results that we've had. Thank Mr. Broxa, Trevor, because <laughs> this Lee Sin, seven kills now. Let's take a look at how he's able to manufacture this pick all himself. That's 1,100 health on empty. That's he, zero. He just saw him barely on that ward walking. Hits the Sonic Wave. As we said, plenty of damage to back it up. And here, Gallia Ultimate is used to try and cover most of the pit. But you see three members of Fnatic actually hugged that back wall. Didn't get hit with the knob up. And as Stitch even was able to use his ult to get in for the one kill, he wasn't able to get away. Caps uses the Realm Warp. <laughs> and you know Prox is having fun. This is the dream of junglers in a professional game to be able to have the majority of the kills on your team as a jungler is so rare. Oh, Fnatic looking to break the base now. There were seven people in the pit, but only one smite. So definitely not the Baron issues there were yesterday. There's exactly. the Sivirol. Well, let's see. How did G-Rex handle this? It's such an insurmountable task. 
ball of the forge guard is thrown down by Whippo. The secondary cost is interrupted. Inhibitor turret falls. Glacial Fisher comes down as the boomerang blades and the ricochets and the overloads are rat attack tatting, making G-Rex go splat. The inhibitor falls. The kills are coming in and the massive minion wave is pouring onto the Nexus. Fnatic bounced back from their defeat yesterday with the substitute oh, 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 with the minions to kill Stitch. Fnatic finish in style, taking down G-Rex. Busan goes mad, and Fnatic finish 2-1. Reckless rips off the headset to the proactive team, the spoils in the 2018 meta. They blew apart G-Rex and make the game yesterday just a mere memory for the Fnatic faithful. Right before this game, we heard from Invictus Gaming jungler Ning that Fnatic is the scariest opponent that he thinks he will face in this group. And they definitely made a good case for it here in their 24-minute victory over G-Rex. Earlier in the game, Papa Smithy, you talked about the Brox's face memes. I'm going to pivot that story. Ladies and gentlemen, get a photo of Brox's face. Share that on social media, and maybe Brox's lease in prowess will bless your solo queue games in future, because that was a stunning performance across the map. Every Fnatic fan is feeling the mum get the camera moment now. Just take a picture of the team with their names being drowning out all of the other sounds in Busan. Wonderful performance from Fnatic. Puts them on the straight and narrow as they end their first round robin two and one. And spare a thought for G-Rex, who made a play early, got punished, and then were simply picked apart. Fnatic, they picked up that win. We're going to head to the